Okay, well, welcome to today's SHPO service hours. Um, we typically come on every other Friday to run these to help some of our newer customers get started. Before we jump in, just a quick introduction to myself and um, my two hosts here. I'm Joanne. I am on the customer success side of things here at SHPO, and I'm going to help moderate the webinar today. Uh, Sergio, why don't you introduce yourself really quickly? Yeah, thanks, Joe. Um, happy Friday, everyone. I appreciate all of our attendees today. We're going to learn a lot about SHPO. So uh, myself, uh, my name is Sergio. I work here at SHPO. I've been here for about close to a year, um, almost a year. And I work on the sales team with Mike. I typically work with some of our larger customers. But over time, I've worked with everybody from some mom and pops um, all the way up to bigger enterprise. So yeah, I'm just excited to teach you guys a little bit more about how to be efficient with SHPO today. Awesome. And Mike, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Thanks, Joe. Uh, yeah, uh, I echo what Sergio uh, said. Happy Friday. I can see the uh, number of uh, cups of coffee for myself dwindle that'll uh, get me through the end of the week. So excited about that. Um, I, As uh, Joe and Sergio said, my name is Mike Hathaway. I run our sales team here at Shippo and um, I'm very familiar with the uh, e-commerce space of um, during my tenure here, helped numerous uh, uh, companies either change their shipping process to make it more efficient, access better shipping rates, or uh, help set up their e-commerce business from scratch. So whether you're looking for a way to improve your current shipping process or uh, looking for better options for shipping or even just approaching shipping uh, for your business for the very first time, hopefully uh, we can shed some light uh, on some questions you may have and point you in the right direction of best practices we've seen employed by either other SHPO uh, customers or in the past or partners of uh, SHPOs uh, that we uh, work with on a daily basis. So really excited to get into uh, the presentation today, answer any questions uh, anybody has, and of course, uh, be a resource thereafter as well. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. And he talked about this a little bit. Um, so I'm going to come right back to you, Mike. Tell everyone a little bit about what SHPO does. Yeah, of course. Uh, so Shippo is basically two different things. First and foremost, we are an order management platform that's designed to help e-commerce businesses ship packages uh, and create shipping labels in a fast, easy and uh, effective way. Um, we do this by connecting directly to e-commerce stores, automating the label generation process uh, and helping with that post purchase experience for you and your customers so that they know exactly where their items are and should they need to generate a return label, they can do that easily through Shippo. Uh, and then the other aspect of our business is about uh, providing those discounted shipping rates. So we have our uh, platform and then we have our relationship with the carriers like USPS, UPS, DHL. These are all carriers that we partner with um, and are able to provide discounts through to all of our customers uh, so that hopefully when you sign up for Shippo, you're not only finding a new and efficient way to fulfill your shipments, but you're also saving money in that process along the way as well. Thank you. Um, and probably wondering why we even start this webinar. Um, when COVID times started, we found that a ton of new customers were coming online and it was a little bit difficult to navigate. And as we started to learn more about what customers needed and what they were asking, we realized that we could share a ton of um, expertise on our side to kind of walk everyone through things that you need to think about as you start selling online, which is something that is super important right now. So we'll go ahead and get started. One of the very first questions I had as I was learning about uh, shipping and this space was packaging, right? Um, everything that gets to you has to be packaged in a certain way. Um, and uh, Sergio, I'm going to have you talk a little bit more about this. Perfect. Thank you. So this is, this is probably the first question you're going to be asking yourself once you've established your brand, you've opened up your store. Uh, you have your products, you're probably going to ask yourself, how do I choose my packaging? What do I send these items out in? Um, this is very important because at the end of the day, this is going to affect your, your money. This is going to affect your money. This is going to affect your products. 
Um, and in turn, it's going to possibly affect your customers as well. So really determine what it is that you're shipping. Some of the first things I ask myself are, um, are my items fragile? Are my items perishable? Um, are they going to be traveling far? Are they going to be traveling short? These are some of the things that I want to ask myself so I can determine what the best packaging is going to be. Um, I'm asking myself if they're fragile because if it's possible, you always want to send them out in a, in a bubble mailer, AKA a poly mailer um, or a padded envelope, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's usually going to be like the first thing you want to determine if it's possible for your items to be sent out in those, in that type of packaging, that's going to be the way to go. If you absolutely need to send out in boxes, of course, you're going to want to send out in boxes. Um, some items may not be, it may not hold up in poly mailers. So you may have to go with boxes, but a really good reason why you want to try and uh, stick with the poly mailers are a few things. So one, even for yourself, it's going to be cheaper. When you go out, whether you're buying in bulk or one, one by one, uh, poly mailers are always going to be significantly cheaper than buying boxes. Um, so that's going to help you because in sometimes it might be, you know, three or four times cheaper. So if you really want to reduce your expenses when it comes to shipping, that's a good first step right there. Um, another thing about poly mailers is space. They're, they're going to take up less space, not only in shipping, but for yourself at your business or at your home. Um, you can stack poly mailers. You can have a bunch without taking up a lot of space. So those are some of the things that are going to help you out. They're going to help your business. Um, and again, if they're, you know, if you're sending out maybe, I don't know, maybe you have salsa or something in a jar, a poly mailer may not cut it. Um, it's going to be pretty, pretty difficult. Things could break. If it's got to go in a box, then that makes sense. Um, and then always think about when you're purchasing these items. So whether you, you're going with poly mailers or you're going with boxes, always try and buy in bulk. Um, the bottom line on these guys are it, it's pretty cheap as it is. So buying in bulk, you know, 40, 50 or so, it's not exactly going to break the bank. Um, so that's going to be your best bet as opposed to, you know, going into a store and just spending a couple bucks on each. Um, and then another thing to determine there also is your, your service level. So what am I going to be shipping these as? Um, are they going out flat rate? Are they not going out flat rate? If it, and we'll, we'll touch more on flat rate and what it means and when it's best. But if you determine that you are shipping flat rate, then you're going to want to get your packaging straight from a carrier. For example, with USPS, in order to utilize those flat rate services, you do have to have their branded packaging. So you can get their branded boxes, get their branded poly mailers straight from your local office, and they are free. Um, I believe online as well. If you go online and try and order them, maybe minus the shipping, but the actual packages themselves should be free. So that's another good thing to think about. If you do use flat rate, you're not going to pay for packaging, but you do have to utilize their service level. Um, if flat rate doesn't make sense for your business for whatever reason, then of course you're kind of out on that side and then you'll have to start looking um, at your own packaging. Some places that we recommend are very standard places like Uline, um, places like Amazon as well. If you really want to get fancy, there's even a company called Arca, A-R-K-A, -A, Arca. That's another cool company that offers customization and they can really do whatever it is that you need. Uh, but yeah, that, I think that sums up packaging. Thanks, Sergio. And with packaging, you mentioned it a little bit, uh, but there are costs. Uh, packaging is one of those um, things that are calculated in your cost. So what are other ways to minimize costs? Yeah, and this is another very, very important thing because when you have your e-commerce store, you're thinking about the materials you have to purchase as an expense, and then you also have to think about the cost of shipping as an expense. So how do I minimize costs? First step here is to utilize a platform like Shippo. Probably not like Shippo, you probably want to use Shippo, um, but this is a step in the right direction because we are going to offer discounts right out of the gate. So some of these discounts that we offer with USPS, UPS, and DHL, and DHL only being international, these rates may take a lot of volume and a lot of time. It could potentially take years for a company to establish a negotiated rate like the ones we get with these carriers directly. On day one, whether you're shipping out a single package per month or you're shipping out a thousand, we're gonna give you the best discounted rates from an aggregator um, through USPS, UPS, and DHL. So what you see right here on the screen, uh, this, is our, this is our rate card for USPS. It has a, a decent, I think I would say the majority of the breakdowns for service levels by location and weight. Um, and this is a very good thing to look at. Uh, you potentially can have access to this and you wanna determine what it is that I'm spending, what zones am I going to, how heavy are my items. Um, you want to optimize and dial this in. 
At the top, as you can see, you'll see flat rates up there. If it makes sense to use flat rates, you wanna use flat rates. A good simple rule of thumb when it comes to flat rates, if you're shipping items that are decently heavy um, and they're going pretty far, you're going coast to coast, flat rate might be the best bet. But you wanna, what you really wanna determine here is you wanna look at those prices that we're charging for flat rate, and then you wanna look down below, whether it's first class or on priority, and determine what the price would be if you didn't go flat rate. So there's gonna be somewhat of a threshold when those items are very, very light. On this chart, I think you can even see there, the worst case scenario is $5.70. So if you're shipping items that are under 16 ounces or a pound, flat rate isn't gonna make sense because you can see right there on the chart, $7.15 is the cheapest offering we have. So flat rate, again, long distance, heavy packages, flat rate is, gonna be, um, is typically gonna be the, the way to go. Um, in order to really, you know, when you're giving your pricing to your, your customers in order to really make it easier on yourself, a lot of people like to just choose a flat rate and call it a day. Um, if your business model calls for that, that's an easy, easy way to plug in those rates into your website. Um, but if you have such a complex business model, you have so many different variations of products and sizes and, and uh, variations. And yeah, you probably want to determine with the chart, um, your pricing and, and where you kind of land there. Uh, but yeah, and, and again, don't, don't get too discouraged. If you're a day one company, if you're just starting and you're figuring it out, your, your pricing and your shipping, it's not going to be dialed in on day one and nobody expects it to be. It's going to take some time. It's going to take months, maybe even years to really pinpoint it out. Maybe not years, but it's going to take some time to, to dial in that pricing and get it very, very accurate. And as you go and start seeing what we're charging and what your average pricing is, Shippo will also help and kind of tell you what your average um, cost of packages are so you can determine what it is that you have to change as you go. So don't get discouraged. It's, a, it's gonna be a work in progress, but um, we're gonna be here to help. Awesome, thanks Sergio. I'm a little biased. You should definitely use Shippo. I totally agree <laughs> there. Um, Mike, now we have packaging and we have our costs for the packaging and the um, actual shipment rate. Um, what is the best way to get my package to a carrier? Yeah, that's a great question. I think we, we this is often a, not necessarily a point of confusion uh, when people sign up for Shippo, but it's definitely the question they ask uh, most often after they've created their shipping labels is what do I do now? Um, the great thing about Shippo shipping labels is once you've generated them, uh, when you do hand them to the carrier or the carrier takes them from you, uh, there will be no additional charge at that time. Um, you'll just drop it off to them and they'll take it and uh, hopefully deliver that package in an expedited manner. Um, so that leaves you with two different options for getting the packages to them. Of course, uh, you can always take these packages to the carrier themselves. So if you create a USPS label, obviously taking that to the post office is a great option. Uh, UPS, DHL, you can drop it off at their location directly. Usually they have a drop box or a drop location where you can just leave it. Um, and because you already printed the label and it is associated with live postage, there will be no charge at that time for just dropping it off. Um, the other way um, is to uh, schedule a pickup for that carrier to come to you. Uh, you can do this in our shipments tab after you've created labels uh, for that day. So um, once you create your labels, go to the shipments tab at the top of the page and it's in the picture on this uh, slide, there is a schedule pickup button. Uh, right now you can schedule a pickup through Shippo for USPS and DHL Express. Um, in order to schedule the pickup, you'll just need to make sure that address is associated with your sender's address, um, and it'll automatically ask you where that, uh, where you'll be leaving your packages and a few questions about uh, actually picking up that item, and then we'll schedule that pickup directly with the carrier, and hopefully they'll come to you. Um, usually it takes uh, about 12 to 36 hours for them to come by after scheduling that pickup, so certainly if you need those packages to go out today, I would certainly recommend bringing it to the carrier. Um, the last thing I'll mention is uh, the picture on this screen that says uh, scan form um, or uh, it says USPS scan at acceptance. Uh, this is an example of a USPS scan form. Uh, if you're not familiar with the concept of a USPS scan form, essentially this is a single sheet of paper that the uh, carrier or the postal worker can scan as opposed to scanning every single package uh, that you're sending out that day. It's a master barcode associated with each and every shipment you're sending. Um, 
So postal workers love this uh, because if you're dropping off uh, 100 packages, they, uh, they will get quite ornery if you uh, make them scan each individual package uh, and they will often ask you for a scan form. So in order to create those, um, you'll go into that same shipments tab after creating your labels and hit the create manifest button in the top right hand corner and it'll automatically generate you a page that looks just like this. A uh, very important note, USPS only allows these scan forms to be created the same day you create your labels for those shipments. So uh, a good example that I always provide is if you are sending out packages tomorrow and you're creating 50 labels and you create 25 of those labels tonight, the last thing you do is, uh, or the last thing you should do tonight is create a scan form for the 25 labels you've created tonight. And then tomorrow when you create the other 25 labels, uh, you'll create another scan form. So you'll bring all 50 packages to the carrier with two scan sheets and they will accept that and uh, probably really enjoy uh, having you as a customer as opposed to somebody who's dropping off 100 packages that wants to be scanned individually. So um, post-purchase, getting into the carrier, having them come pick it up from you. Scan forms are important along the way, uh, but uh, you can do all of this within the Shippo app and with just a few clicks. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, so maybe if you provide them with a scan form, they are least likely to lose your package or um, for anything to happen to your package, but things happen. Can you walk us through insurance? Yeah, of course. Um, I think this is an important call out um, because especially as things get busy and uh, timelines for delivery are expected by our customers and our buyers, we wanna make sure that when we're sending items, we have that peace of mind that should something happen, uh, we are covered as a provider uh, for that cost that we're incurring as a business. Um, and we can also provide it or provide protection for our buyers in that situation so that they don't uh, get in, this, uh, in a place where they're out of money as well. Um, so uh, first and foremost, if you are purchasing a USPS priority mail label or priority mail express label uh, through Shippo, those labels and through USPS, come with an automatic coverage amount of $100. So um, USPS Priority Mail comes with automatic coverage up to $100 on outgoing shipments. So you don't need to do anything additional to add that coverage, it's automatically included. And so if a Priority Mail or a Priority Mail Express label uh, package that has been sent is lost, um, you can go to Shippo's Help Center, uh, reach out to our team or go to USPS directly um, and fill out the claims form. It's a super easy process and they make uh, filling that out a breeze. Um, if you're shipping through any other service level or maybe $100 uh, through USPS Priority Mail isn't quite enough for the item you're sending out, uh, we do have the option in Shippo to purchase additional insurance. Uh, we use a third party provider called Shipsurance. Um, we basically went out into the market, looked at all of the package and parcel insurance providers and we were looking for somebody who provided really quick claim service, had really good customer service, and of course worked with all the carrier partners that we work with here at Shippo and that's exactly what Shipsurance does. Um, if a package is lost and you've added an additional amount of insurance through Shipsurance, uh, you will work with Shippo and the Shipsurance team to get a claim filed. Uh, as mentioned, they have an excellent customer service team and a really fast turnaround on insurance claims. Uh, that's why us and our customers love that. In order to add the additional insurance, you'll see it uh, repeating itself on the screen here. It's in the shipment options of the order details page within Shippo. So if you're looking to add insurance, click on the order, it'll bring you to this order details page. And then on the left-hand side, there's a button that says uh, add shipment insurance. You enter the coverage amount you're looking for and you are charged a percentage of that overall cost. If you are on our pay-as-you-go plan, is 1.25% of the overall or additional um, coverage amount. And then on our professional or subscription plan, it's 1% of the overall value. So if you are sending a lot of packages where you're adding additional insurance, our professional subscription plan will pretty much pay for itself there within the first few shipments. Um, so example, uh, if you're adding $100, pay as you go, it's $1.25 for that insurance. On professional, it's a dollar. So certainly as you send more shipments, we do see that uh, subscription plan become cheaper overall. Uh, but very easy to add shipping insurance. It's included on some packages, Priority Mail, Priority Mail Express, and then we provide a third party option. That's a really quick, easy and simple process for our customers to go through. And the 
uh, outlier event where a package is mishandled or is not delivered. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. And we already mentioned it a couple of times here, but there are a ton of different carriers that you can use. How do you optimize against that or to use all of them? Uh, Sergio, I'm going to come to you for that. Sweet. Thank you, Joe. So yeah, this is, a, this is very important because Shippo itself, um, this is what it's designed for. It's designed to optimize your um, shipping situation. So right out of the gate with Shippo, we are going to offer a lot of discounted rates. We're going to offer discounted rates specifically with um, three carriers. So the United States Postal Service, uh, UPS, and DHL. I mentioned earlier, DHL is only for international, so you won't see an option for DHL unless the recipient address is outside of the United States. Um, we are adding more carriers as we go, like some regional ones, for example, um, LSO and even GSO in the future. And I'm sure we're gonna be adding more here and there as we go. But how can I optimize across multiple carriers? How can I optimize and utilize the offerings of Shippo? So the good thing is that we're gonna be, we're gonna be doing a little bit of that work for you initially. So if you were to sign up today, automatically you would have access to our master accounts from those carriers that I mentioned. There's nothing you need to do. You don't need to sign up through the carriers. You don't need to talk to them. We've already done all the work for you and we're plugging in these accounts automatically from day one. So what you really wanna make sure to have is that you wanna make sure that you have all of your carriers connected. You don't wanna have any turned off unless for some weird specific reason, they just will not apply to you and you cannot use them. But if you have a normal business model and you're in a, a typical area, you definitely wanna have them all available because if you're shipping everywhere, you're also doing international, you wanna have these options available. And the main reason why is because there is not ever going to be a clear winner 100% of the time. Um, there isn't gonna be a situation where UPS will always beat USPS or the other way around. So, and I'm not just talking about pricing either. I'm talking about pricing, I'm talking about transit time, and I'm even talking about locations. When you go international, there's gonna be times when UPS may or may not deliver to a certain area and the only option is gonna be DHL. Or there's gonna be another situation where USPS will be the only option and you won't see DHL or UPS. So you wanna make sure that you have all of these turned on because this is gonna enable and ensure that you do not miss out on the best option. So whether it is the cheapest option that you're looking for or you're looking for the quickest option, you wanna have these turned on because when you are trying to fulfill an order in Shippo, by default, Shippo will choose the cheapest rate, but you'll also be able to see all of the other options. Um, a lot of people tend to go in, create their account, and then maybe they've had a bad time with one of the carriers and they'll turn them off. But you definitely wanna go in there, turn them on and see if they're gonna work out for you. Um, if for whatever reason they don't, that's totally fine, but we're gonna give you these options to ensure that you're not missing out on anything. And a very cool thing about optimizing here, especially with Shippo, this is very specific to us, is these carriers here that we utilize and provide rates for, we're gonna waive some of these fees. So whether you have some type of uh, business account with the carriers, or maybe you just walk into a local office, there's gonna be fees here and there that you may not know about that they're gonna charge. It might be a residential fee if you're shipping to um, a residence. It might be a fuel surcharge if uh, you know they, they typically apply that to anything. Uh, we were going to be waiving any fuel surcharges and residential fees when you're utilizing our accounts. So that's another thing to think about is when you are creating a shipment with these carriers directly and you see a rate, there may be some hidden fees there that you may not know about until you get the bill. And with Shippo, unless it's some you know absolute very rarity like a, a discrepancy in the size and weight, you're not going to see any hidden fees come. So think about that as well. There is a possibility there. But other than that, they're not gonna surprise you with any fees. So making sure to utilize all the, all the carriers is, is very crucial. And a big thing to think about as far as like the winners and the losers here between the carriers is they, they're unique, they have specialties. These carriers are special for certain things. Um, DHL, I like to think of them as just the powerhouse in terms of going everywhere. Um, I haven't really seen a DHL not go to a certain country or a certain location. DHL is one of the carriers where they just really, really can go everywhere. They have a wide network. Um, when we're talking about UPS, they're going to be a great carrier when you're shipping out heavier things that are going further in distance. And then USPS, they're going to be the most cost effective. If you're shipping out smaller items, it's not going too far. That's going to be one of your best bet there because they're going to almost always be cheaper 
when we're talking about, you know, one to maybe, I don't know, maybe seven pounds or so, six pounds, USPS is always going to be cheaper. But when you look at it the other way, if you're shipping out a 10 pound package, you're going to notice that USPS becomes very expensive, probably double of what UPS would be. So UPS is specialty there is going to come in handy. And that's what I, like I mentioned earlier, you want to have these options on because there's, there may be a time when you're shipping out a very light package or a very heavy package. And depending on which carrier you have activated, you may be paying double. So you want to avoid that by having these carriers um, available at all times. So me, what I recommend is I always recommend utilizing all the carriers. I know we've all had bad experiences. Maybe one has lost a package. Some, type, some things like that are inevitable. It does happen. It's not unique to a specific carrier as far as things getting damaged or things getting lost. It can happen really with anyone. So I always recommend just kind of giving the carriers a chance and seeing what works out for you. And if at later date you determine that UPS for your business model, maybe you're only shipping out heavy stuff um, and you never see any value out of USPS, okay, that makes sense. Maybe you can turn it off, kind of reduce uh, the visual there and only utilize UPS. Um, but yeah, that's it. It's how to optimize. Awesome. Thank you for the details there for sure. And you mentioned it a little bit. We've seen it grow a bit more on the Shippo side, given the, the current circumstances that we're in um, international. Um, Mike, I'm going to go to you for that. Oh, sorry, Joe. Uh, so caught up uh, answering uh, some of these great questions we have uh, uh, flowing in here right now. I think um, we get a ton of questions about international delivery, especially for people who haven't uh, experienced that process uh, very often or have just done it in person and know how much paperwork is associated with sending out those items. And so um, the first uh, thing I definitely want to make very clear is that Shippo automates the generation of customs declaration paperwork based on the country you're shipping to. And uh, I'll, I'll reiterate, it automates it. So we look at the address uh, that you're sending that shipment to and based on that address in that country, we will fill out customs declaration paperwork for uh, that shipment uh, that uh, meets the requirements set forth by the customs and duties uh, bodies that uh, regulate those shipments going to that country. And so I wanna make sure that uh, that is uh, first and foremost, that concern hopefully isn't a big one for anybody using Shippo. Um, really the difference in creating a label going internationally versus going domestically is going to be all about the customs declaration paperwork and information about what's included in the shipment. Um, so you'll see here on the left side of the screen in this little animation we got going here, um, in order to uh, fill out customs declaration paperwork, you need to enter information about the items that are included in the shipment. Um, such fields that you'll have to uh, include are uh, destination, or excuse me, or, uh, or original country the item's coming from, uh, the cost of the item, how many you're sending out, the weight. Um, if you have this information within your e-commerce store, we source that information automatically into that customs declaration paperwork uh, when we see that order is an international shipment. So if you're using an e-commerce platform, basically everything's done for you. You just have to confirm the information and ship it out from there. If you're doing this uh, using our create label button or uploading a CSV file of addresses, the only difference will be you have to add that item information um, about what's in the actual shipment uh, to send that out. Um, one quick thing to note about uh, customs and duties. Um, if you're not familiar with shipping internationally, there are two different ways that uh, customs and taxes and duties fees will be assessed once those items are sent internationally. Essentially, the cost for shipping that item is assessed at the border crossing by the, uh, by the country accepting that item. And so um, that fee that could be assessed could either be paid by the, uh, the shipper or the recipient. Um, if you, the shipper, would like to pay for that item and the fees associated with that shipment, uh, you'll want to select an option uh, that's showing at the top of the page here for Intercom um, called DDP, Duties and Taxes Paid. And then if you would like the recipient to pay for that, uh, for any applicable fees uh, when you're sending internationally, you would select the option DDU. So DDP means the shipper pays it, DDU, means the recipient pays that fee. 
Um, something to note, uh, USPS does not support a DDP, so the shipper uh, paying that fee. Um, so if you are looking to pay that fee for any of the shipments that you're sending internationally, you'll have to take advantage of our DHL or UPS discounts for those types of shipments. Um, other than that, uh, shipping internationally, it's super easy. We source all the information for you, fill out the paperwork automatically uh, with the information you entered, and then give you options to handle those duties and taxes in whatever way fits your business and provides the best experience for your recipients. Awesome, thanks, Mike. And you know, once a package is ready to go and is um, going to be sent, one of my favorite things when I buy something online is getting a notification that says, you know, order um, has been placed and your tracking details are here. Uh, how does that work in Shippo? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no worries at all. I think this is something that I find myself doing all the time is as soon as I, uh, I order an item, I wanna know exactly uh, when that item is gonna be delivered. So I, I get that order confirmation email and I immediately start clicking on that tracking number to see um, when I'll be receiving it. Um, not sure if anybody else does that, but uh, certainly I find myself kind of researching for those emails in my uh, inbox and making sure I know exactly where my package is and when it's going to be delivered. Um, luckily, Shippo makes this experience uh, very easy um, when I have a vendor that I'm purchasing from um, that's using our platform or I'm managing my own shipments going out to people. Um, essentially, there are two different ways we keep buyers informed of the package status. Um, we have notifications that can be sent from Shippo uh, via email uh, that go out at time of label generation or a little bit delayed or and or at time of delivery. So you can send those out to the recipients um, and you can set those up within our settings and notifications tab. Uh, additionally, uh, many of our e-commerce uh, platform users or um, e-commerce marketplace users want these notifications sent out by the e-commerce platform or uh, the e-commerce marketplace. Um, so for instance, if you're selling on Etsy and you want those notifications to come from Etsy, uh, then certainly uh, one of the great things about Shippo is once you create the label in Shippo for those orders, we automatically fulfill that order within the e-commerce platform and trigger those emails to go out on the other end and those notifications will include the tracking number that's sent or that's uh, associated with the label that you created in Shippo. So um, if you have those notifications coming out from your e-commerce platform or marketplace already, creating the label in Shippo will trigger those and it'll include all the pertinent information for your buyers to be able to track that shipment. Um, the one other thing to note is that if you are sending out tracking information from Shippo, you have the opportunity to brand the tracking page that your buyers or recipients land on. Uh, you can customize that page in the settings and brandings tab. And um, I picked her on mine because the only person that receives my uh, email in, uh, updates are from my mom. Um, so I, uh, I enjoy sending those to her, but uh, you can customize, put your logo in there, send some messaging, the returns uh, policy in there. There's a lot of different stuff we see our customers do with that setup. Thanks, Mike. I'm glad you send your mom stuff all the time. That's great. Uh, you mentioned it quickly already, but we can handle returns in Shippo as well. Um, and we're going to come back to you to talk a little bit about returns. All righty. Uh, so uh, managing the returns process, um, it is a different uh, process for each individual shipper or merchant that we're dealing with. Um, and I think it fits into each uh, business's uh, either policy or process a little bit differently. We have people who uh, manage subscription boxes of clothes where every shipment they send out, they know uh, the vast majority of those will include a return because people only keep some of the stuff in the box. Um, and then we have other uh, uh, merchants that we work with that deal with like one-off returns or uh, want to provide a return experience through an option like uh, return magic or ready returns. Uh, luckily, these are all experiences that Shippo can help facilitate and make super easy for our vendors to manage. Um, so there are a ton of different ways you can create return labels in Shippo. Um, one of the most important things to note in this section is that Shippo supports what are called scan-based return labels. Uh, this means that you will not be charged for the Shippo fee or the associated postage for that return label until that 
label is actually used to ship something. So until it's scanned into their system, meaning that you could create all the return labels you'd like. Uh, and unless they're actually used, you will not be charged for that creation or the postage associated with those items. Um, so when it comes to actually creating a return labels, uh, there are a few different options. One, you can create a return label for every single outgoing label that you create. The way to set that up is in our settings and labels tab. There's an option that says generate a return label for every outgoing label. Just check that box and every single time you generate an outgoing label, you'll see the return label uh, in tandem right next to it. Um, additionally, if you need to create return labels for on a one-off basis, you can do that by going to the shipments tab. As you see recurring on your screen here, go to the uh, little drop-down menu on the right-hand side of the download button and there's a uh, option in that drop-down menu to create a return label. Um, that is super easy. And then additionally, if you're using an option like Ready Returns or Return Magic, um, you can integrate our discounted shipping rates directly into those platforms just by copying and pasting our API key into their platforms and uh, giving that uh, service directly to them um, or making our rates directly available within your returns portal. So uh, three or four different ways to manage returns. Uh, we leave it up to the vendor and uh, hopefully help facilitate the easiest process you have decided to employ for your customers. Um, and they're completely free to include unless uh, they are used on the other end. So uh, hopefully that gives enough context on the return labels, Jeff. Thank you, Mike. Um, and we pretty much gone through step by step all the little things that you have to think about before even getting started um, in Shippo. But one of the most important things to get started once you have thought about all of the packaging, um, carrier levels, and um, returns and notifications for, for your customers is to actually get your orders up and running. And Sergio, I'm going to come to you for how to really get started. Yeah, so connecting your store, this is uh, this is pretty important. I would say the majority of Shippo users do have some type of store. Um, but if you don't have an actual storefront or e-commerce platform, don't worry, we'll get into that um, in a little bit as well. So connecting your store, this is probably besides setting up a payment and your address and things of that nature, this is probably one of the first steps you're going to do. So there's a couple ways of going about connecting a store. Um, if you're a brand new Shippo user today, you've never signed up and after this webinar, you go and sign up, it's gonna be super easy. Um, in that actual sign up flow, we're gonna ask if you are on a store. We're gonna ask if you're on a store and which store you're on. So in that initial process, we are gonna walk you through to getting your store connected. Um, you'll tell us, I'm on Shopify, I'm on Amazon, I'm on WooCommerce, and then the connection will start. Um, for the most part, these stores are going to ask for ba very basic information, just like your username, password, maybe permissions. There's going to be a few stores that we support that may be a little bit more complex and ask for maybe like an API key or a token um, from either or Shippo or the e-commerce platform. But don't let that uh, discourage you. We're going to walk you through the process and tell you exactly what you need to get, where you need to get it, and what exactly it means. So in that sign up process, we're gonna walk you through, we're gonna ask you what it is that you're using, and we're gonna get you connected initially. If you already have an account, or maybe you did that process and maybe now you're on a new storefront, it's very, very easy. It's just a few steps. You're simply gonna to go to settings, and I believe the GIF is kind of going through it right now, but you're just gonna to go to settings, you're gonna to go to stores, and then on the top right of that tab, you're gonna see connect store. Uh, and once you click on connect store, it's going to present you with all of the integrations that we support. So you'll be able to go in there, find your store, click on it. And then from there, Shippo will walk you through the process and ask you for the information that's needed to create the connection. And once you do that, you will get confirmation in Shippo saying that Amazon, for example, has been successfully connected. Once you've done that, you can go back to your orders page. And if you already have orders, you'll probably start to see them sync immediately. In order to really get all of the orders, if you have thousands and thousands, it will take a little bit, it won't take too long, but you'll notice that it will take several minutes for all your orders to sink in. So if you don't have a store, you're probably saying, hey, that sounds great, but I don't exactly have uh, one of these stores that you guys integrate with, or maybe I do everything manually. That's not a problem. We have options for everyone. So, and it's funny, I actually spoke to someone yesterday that had mentioned that, hey, I can't use Shippo. I found out that you guys only work with e-commerce platforms. Totally not true. 
if you don't have one, that's not a problem. So what you can do is you can either A, upload a CSV file, you can B, just create your labels manually, um, or if you have a more complex business model and you have developers, we do have an API available where you can create a connection and really have a custom solution. So the CSV file, which is probably more commonly used with people that don't have an integration, um, a CSV file is just a file that you would utilize from Google Sheets or even Microsoft Excel, where you would have all your orders organized in that platform, um, you know, with the name, where it's going, and what the package is, the line items, things of that nature. So you can export that CSV file from Excel, and then you can import it into Shippo, and all of your orders will come in as if you did have an, have an e-commerce connection. So just like you see there in the, in the beginning, you'll see all your orders flow in from the CSV. And the CSV is pretty simple. Just like everything else, we will walk you through the process. Um, on your orders page, you're going to see upload CSV on the top right. You're going to click on that. It's going to ask you for the file. And then it's just going to ask to map all of the correct fields. So it's going to recognize the field. If it says, you know, maybe it has a bunch of numbers in it, it might recognize that as the phone number. If it doesn't, you can just simply select that anything in this field will be the phone number. Anything in this field is the first name. So you'll just map them up. Once it's correct, your orders will flow into Shippo. And if you don't do that, maybe you have a business where you're doing everything over the phone, or maybe you're doing everything through email. That's also not a problem. You can simply just go onto that orders page and right next to the button that says upload CSV, you'll see create a label. So you can create manual orders, AKA labels. You can just create them from scratch in Shippo once you click that button, it's going to ask you for your recipient's information. It's going to auto-populate your information and you can get going. You can just create an actual order. You can create a packing slip for that order, add the items, the quantities, the sizes, the colors, and then you can get everything that you would as if it was connected um, as a normal order. So those are a few options. Please, please don't, um, you know, don't think that we are a specific company that only caters to companies with a tech stack or with an e-commerce platform. So we have a solution for everybody, whether you have a really, really complex system with an ERP or you're using a CRM and you need API, we can accommodate. If you're a mom and pop or you're just upcoming and maybe you organize everything on a non-traditional platform, that's okay too. We're going to have a solution for everyone. Um, so yeah, those are some options uh, that you can use to connect a store, to, to utilize a manual process or even a CSV file. Thanks, Sergio. And I think that is all the little pieces, all the steps that we um, kind of guide our customers through as they are getting started, as they are learning more about um, shipping platforms or Shippo. Um, and yeah. I think that Mike and Sergio have been answering questions through the Q&A chat box that we have, but if either of you want to come on and, you know, talk a little bit more about some of those questions in, in that Q&A box, feel free to do so. If there's any that we didn't touch upon and um, customers have questions on. Yeah, of course. I think we're nearing 40 uh, uh, questions. We've answered about 35 of them. So let's let's take a look at some of these open ones, see if there's any that would be good to answer kind of as a group here. Um, here. Uh, Clinton, uh, I see that you are looking for quoting uh, freight rates next to package and parcel rates. Unfortunately, that would be a separate API for freight rates. Uh, Shippo's API will only show quotes uh, for uh, packages and parcels. And I think with our UPS account, the maximum weight um, and size uh, is about 150 pounds for those shipments. So um, with our customers who are shipping both freight and package and parcel, they will have a different solution in place for quoting those freight rates. Um, let's see. I'll answer um, Andres really quick. So the difference between Shippo and ShipStation, um, I'll just kind of go through the, a couple of things that are very concrete here. So a couple of things, uh, we are not owned by stamps.com like ShipStation. Um, so when you utilize ShipStation, you do have to have a stamps.com and a ShipStation account. So very important, we are independent. 
Um, we also offer deeper, <coughs> excuse me, deeper cubic discounts. Uh, so with ShipStation, anything that qualifies for cubic pricing, you will notice that it's a little bit more expensive. Um, another thing is that our platform is much more straightforward, easier to use. It's not as clunky and antiquated. Um, and it is web-based as well. So we don't offer like an actual software that you need to download onto a computer. You, know, you can access <clears throat> Shippo from any web browser. And then I think the other thing that's pretty concrete is um, just uptime. If you compare status pages, you'll notice that ShipSta ShipStation tends to go down more often than Shippo. Um, so we're gonna be a little bit more reliable, quicker to use, and just more of an app-like platform as opposed to a computer uh, program platform, okay? Uh, I will answer a quick question here. Um, what is the cost to sign up with Shippo? I think that is something we typically cover, uh, but may not have, or I may have been answering a question. Um, so Shippo has two different pricing plans. We have a pay-as-you-go and a subscription plan. Uh, the pay-as-you-go service uh, charges are just like they sound. You pay for your uh, each use. Um, it's five cents per label that you generate through our platform. Um, and then on our professional or subscription plan that starts at $10 a month, is based on the overall uh, number of labels that you create on a monthly basis. Um, so we have a lot of customers who sign up on our page. You go plan, figure out what rates, uh, what services are right for them. And of course they're not charged until they actually create a label. Mm -hmm. One important thing to note, uh, Shippo is totally free. Um, no Shippo fees on either our pay as you go or subscription plan until the end of the year. So feel free to try out each. Um, we have removed all shipping fees to help small to medium businesses during COVID-19 uh, through uh, December 31st. So um, give our professional plan a trial right now. Um, the rates are the same in each, but there is no registration fee associated with uh, signing up for Shippo. And registering with WooCommerce is really easy. You'll connect your WooCommerce store through Shippo. As soon as you sign up, there's a big WooCommerce button, or you can go to our settings and stores tab hit a uh, store and there's a WooCommerce logo you'll click on. You'll enter the domain of your website, sign into WooCommerce, and then all of your orders will start syncing automatically. Uh, Cynthia, how do, I would like to know how to remove a shipping. I am assuming you mean a label. Um, if you'd like to uh, you know, get a refund, you can get a refund. So what you can do is you can go to that label in shipments and on the far right, there's a little drop down that you can click on and it'll say refund label. So you can request for a refund. If you want to like the order itself, if you want to get rid of that, you can hide the order in Shiba. You can't exactly delete it. Almost the same thing, but you can go into your orders, go on the far right and then click on the drop down and it'll say hide. So that's a refund. And then also how to hide on um, the order as well. Okay. Uh, what else do you have here? And uh, Daniel, really quick. So uh, that one's kind of tough. Obviously, international gets pretty expensive. Um, if it makes, you know, if it makes sense, you can always just utilize not not through us, uh, but you can always utilize stamp postage and then just add shipping. I think shipping is like a dollar something to, or excuse me, shipping tracking, <laughs> tracking. You can add tracking onto a stamp postage. Uh, I think for like a dollar something. So if that might make more sense, but I believe if um, you're utilizing Shippo and shipping internationally with something small, uh, I think it gets, you know, it can be pretty expensive, but there should be an option in there that, um, that can work for you. Alrighty, I see a question from anonymous attendee here. Uh, the export CSV file from GoDaddy puts all the data in one cell. When I try to map the fields, it doesn't separate all the data. Is there a way to fix this? Um, great question. Um, first, we should have a direct integration with GoDaddy. So if you're not able to connect your store, uh, your GoDaddy store to Shippo, please reach out to uh, support at goshippo.com. We are happy to help get you set up and connected. We can hop on the phone. We can answer via email. We can even probably connect it for you. Um, so pretty easy. Joe and her team are fantastic helping out with that. So um, that being said, if you have a CSV file where it's all in one uh, cell, um, you'll need to separate that out. Um, the upload CSV file, as I'm sure you're experiencing, matches those fields. And so um, you'll need to fix that within the file itself. Um, and unfortunately, um, if it's all in one cell, that's not something that Shippo's uh, upload CSV uh, function can fix. There are a lot of uh, 
uh, really good uh, YouTube tutorials that I've watched uh, that help you separate data really easily um, in Excel or Sheet. Um, so I would recommend taking a look at YouTube if you still have questions about manipulating a CSV file because that's how I've learned. Alice, Got great it. question around if we are different than Sindel. Uh, we are very different than Sindel. Sindel is a carrier. Uh, we are not a carrier. We are a label generating service for carriers. So Sindel is actually one of the carriers that we support. Um, you can add your Sindel account to Shippo so that you can compare costs, create labels for Sindel, see Sindel's price against other carriers that are supported in Shippo. Um, but Sindel is a carrier much like USPS or UPS. Uh, for you to compare costs between and create labels for. Shippo uh, as a service is not an actual carrier. We don't deliver packages. We work with those carriers who do. Perfect. And I think we'll, um, I think we'll stop here with these last two, uh, Joe being the last one, Alice, and then the question there. So the Shippo integration, exactly, it doesn't, it doesn't provide, unfortunately, out of the box, it doesn't provide live rates into your Squarespace um, website. So our pricing isn't going to plug in. So as far as assigning cost of shipping for each weight, like you can, I mean, you can still follow that or you can base it off of weight, dollar amount, or even location. Um, in Squarespace, all of these settings will be done. So you can choose to enter, you know, whatever pricing it is that you feel you're comfortable with. You can go into Shippo, determine the pricing, and then you can plug that in. But um, out of the box, we won't provide our rates live in your Squarespace. You will have to have the same process that you have now or switch it up a little bit and provide different automations and, and settings in your store, okay? Did we do it, Sergio? We answered almost 50 questions here between the two of us. I, I think you did most of the work, so I appreciate the heavy lifting there. <laughs> no, it was a team effort. Um, yeah, I think we, I think we uh, covered everything. Can we get a copy of this webinar? Yes, you can get a copy of this webinar. We record it, we'll send it out. Uh, maybe the email will come from Joe. Is that an email you send? It does come from me. So the sign up email comes from me. The follow up email will come from me in a couple of days. It's Friday. We're usually good about sending it out first thing next week. So, um, yeah, a webinar recording will come out next week. And I think in our resources, there are recordings of a lot of these processes, uh, some done by Sergio, some done by myself. So if you are interested in hearing either of our voices uh, uh, for longer, I'm not sure why it would be. Uh, but there's a lot of information that lives within our help center in both video uh, article. Um, that those are the only two formats of information that we have there, but those are pretty good ones. There's also, um, we have a blog resource um, and a ton of articles on our regular website to help um, in, in this space as well. But happy Friday, everybody. Thank um, you oh, for joining. Last plug on my end. Go um, for it. Sorry, Joe, I apologize for interrupting. No, Lisa just uh, brought up something that uh, made me want to reference something that our uh, marketing team put together. If you have any questions about pricing conversations, about general strategy for launching an e-commerce business, having shipping incorporated into your brick and mortar business or doing this on the side, uh, Shippo has uh, partnered with a lot of our partners. Uh, uh, we have worked with a lot of our partners uh, to compile uh, what we call an online seller's handbook. Uh, if you go to goshippo.com backslash O-S-H, uh, you will be brought directly to that page. It answers all sorts of questions like, what should I charge as a shopping cart uh, fee for my shipping? Um, what should I expect to pay for shipping? How can I charge for each individual customer? How can I continue to incorporate shipping as a part of my pricing model or overall uh, revenue model? in a way that uh, will continue to be sustainable as my business grows. How should I do packaging? A lot of the questions Sergio and I answered today, um, I probably answered a lot better than we did today in a long format. And it's a fantastic resource uh, that I always suggest my customers uh, reach out to. I feel like after reading it, I could launch my own e-commerce business uh, overnight. So um, not just a Shippo plug, but um, a plug for kind of all uh, e-commerce businesses. It's a really great uh, source of uh, information. That was a perfectly fine thing to interrupt me on. I was going to mention it and um, the handbook is great. I learned a ton from it as well.
Um, and if you can't find it or anything like that, email us and we can help you locate it. But it's on our website if you just head over to, to goshippo.com. And I think that that is it. Um, our email is down below. Should you need anything from us, we will follow up with you guys next week. Um, and I hope everybody has a great weekend, a uh, great rest of your Friday. Um, that's it. Thanks, everyone. Everybody